Imagine doing a paranormal investigation in the location where the first ever feature-length film was shot in Hollywood, California, which also contains Cecil B. DeMille's first office and props from movies such as The Ten Commandments, The Crusades, King of Kings, items that were used by actors and actresses during the silent film era, and more. Also, the building sat in the lot of Paramount Studios for decades, and many actors and actresses, as well as film crew, used it to work out in as a gym. I did this investigation back in early 2014, and you will see it in this episode. Also, a couple of return visits I did in 2016 from the archives, finally edited together, the Hollywood Heritage Museum. I visited the DeMille Lasky barn a couple of days before doing an explore for any haunted activity which one of the board members of the Hollywood Heritage Museum gave me permission to do. I happened to have my Paris Spectrum camera with me and ended up doing some filming once no one was around except for a staff member who I have since forgot his name. Unfortunately, the audio is poor quality with this little camera which films in ultraviolet light. Knocking over here. We play subtly.
customer. Barely see you. Spectrum. Something's interfering. I'll go over to the next. Look, no problem. And there's no light right there illuminating from anywhere ricocheting off here to cause that. It's kind of interesting. We're here in the uh, silent movie. Silent players. Actors. Two other cameras. One with no full spectrum, see if it does it on that. You can see from the smartphone photo there's different coloring to those two photos. But when I took a still photo in full spectrum, you can still see the photos. The anomaly is only during video. Okay, I took pictures over there. Not being used. Kind of significance this piano has. Motion picture camera here. Well, it's actually, yeah, the lens is right there. So interesting. That'll be turned off when I do the investigation in here. Hollywood motion picture industry, but not the talkie films. This is the silent age of film. The golden age of film, if you will. If there's any spirit here who can speak with me, please try your hardest. Cecil? Mr. DeMille? Oops, that's me stepping on that. I heard that Miss Mr. DeMille's his secretary? But I heard she haunts his place, and I think she haunts his office. That was said by a psychic. Her typewriter is in DeMille's office. There are claims typing has been heard coming from his office. I remember a staff member also telling me they once held a seance upstairs in the barn as well. So I heard about the roses in his grave. And that is at the cemetery story of this woman who used to bring roses. In the 1950s, the Valentino Memorial Service would be subjected to a spiritualist craze which included phony mediums, hmm. seances, and proclamations of other world Rudy sightings. In the return of Rudolph Valentino, the author, Carol McKinstry, claimed that Rudolph Valentino had dictated an entire motion picture screenplay channeled through her almost 30 years after his passing. That's funny. He even has cigars. Rudolph Valentino cigars. And there he is smoking. Or at least a picture of him. My prelude to the investigation I'll do here on Sunday.
Science Meter and check out some of these objects here. Kind of, but I didn't really have any experiences up there. It is dark up there. Watch that night shot, that way it won't. Uh... See. Here we go. Oh, okay. I can turn the night shot off. I guess we'll hear if anybody comes up, right? Yeah, sure. Alright. I don't want to be in your way either. Alright, that's fine. And then up here you just basically keep like storage and yeah, uh, desks. We have, uh, I love the smell of old stuff. Boxes. You know, it's the, mostly just files. The smell of musky, old. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I've always loved that. So you said nothing you know of up here. Not that I know of. No. For you, you haven't experienced anything. anything no. Has anybody told you they've had anything happen to them up here? Um, no. I, Weird. Yes. Um, I'm sure someone has a story. Yeah. Up here is where staff and acquaintances held a seance trying to contact the mill, his secretary, and showbiz notables from Hollywood's past. Right now you can't get to the Hollywood sign because that is a... Uh, close the trail right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well it's impossible to actually get to the sign. I mean, it's illegal, but um, you can usually get good shots of it. Oh yeah, from like from behind, that's it. There's a fence up and all that. Because when I took fairly close photos, I could see cameras and stuff there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's just, it's dangerous. I think, I think it's also because of the suicide that happened there. Yeah, the well, one... I, I, I'm sure there's been more than one, but the really famous one is Peg Out Whistle. Right. 33, yeah. I actually went by her house. Oh, really? Oh, cool. Yeah, because I was there on Beach Nut Drive, and I knew the address, so I just stopped, and I walked, and I took close photos of the uh, um, Hollywood sign from the road there. All right, so that's kind of cool. And Oh, wow, you've got some serious file cabinets back here. Um, um, Yeah. Those have probably been here a long time. I'd love to do more work with this someday. But yeah, we, it's a mix of, um, you know, uh, Hollywood studio things and then also local history, um, you know, and, and architectural. Yeah, I'm sure uh, some of this is Hollywood uh, props and things, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, quite cameras. a few. Right over here. The spears. Yeah, yeah. Kind of cool. Yeah, and of course we have more downstairs and display cases. Let's turn this off. All right. Where's the lights here? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna get a shot in the dark. Right here. All right. Thanks for taking me up there. I always wonder where that scene is where he did that face. Oh, yeah? Valentina. I think it's just a still. I don't know if it's actually from one of his films. Okay, so it's a still. Yeah. I mean, because he really does have that sinister look on his face. I right? know, I know. I, I did go by his grave yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love him. Um, I love it forever. Yeah, I covered that pretty well. Now, there's another one that, you know, I'm not from here, but I found out, but the one that's in. Is it Northwood? It's like one of those Pierce Brothers 
Yeah. Uh, they have a lot of incredible people that are buried there. Yeah, oh, Forest Lawn? Or, uh, Not Forest Lawn, it's where Marilyn Monroe's buried, uh, along with a ton of other uh, great actors. Yeah. And actresses. Yeah. I haven't been out there. I've really only ever been to Hollywood Forever. Okay. There's still some interesting people buried there, so. Yeah. 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 So this was uh, this was from when the, the building was a barn, uh, or sorry, was a, a, a the gym. gym. A gym. That's when it was a Paramount, right? Yes, uh, it was a gym from twenty nine until the fifties. Can't believe Imagine that. Who might have walked through these doors? <laughs> oh, a lot, a lot of famous people. I'm yeah. sure. I've been in and out of here. I wonder if Gloria Swanson was ever in here. It's possible. Um, she certainly was affiliated with DeMille for a really long time. Yeah. He made her a star in the 20s. And these are, of course, these pictures right here are original signed pictures, right? So some of them are signed. Some of them uh, were printed with uh, a signature in them. Uh, okay. I forget what that's called, but it's a particular technique they did use quite a bit. Um, but this this is all related to um, the publication of a book uh, recently that we had a night, uh, like an event about. It was all sort of uh, motion picture photography and particularly um, portrait photography. Um, by Silent Film Studios, um, and these are from mostly from uh, personal collections of people who are on the board. It's our Hollywood Heritage Museum. Okay. Um, Do you have anything related to like Fatty Arbuckle? Um, or I'm thinking of um, Virginia, Virginia Repay. Repay, yeah. Repay. Um, I don't know if we do have any on display. Okay. Let's see, I don't think there's any over here. Um, did you visit that hotel where it happened in San Francisco? You know, I didn't get to go to the place where it happened, but I did go by her grave today. How about this chest right down here? Is that a that, original? That I believe something? that's a prop from um, one of DeMille's films. I think it's from um, the Ten Commandments. The thing I would focus on would be this uh, karyatide from the um, from the Garden Court Apartments. This was a building that was um, on Hollywood Boulevard. It was uh, about it was a couple of doors over from the from the Chinese Theater, and uh, okay. it was a building that was demolished kind of very fairly recently, like uh, recently, like. A, Think about I think in the 80s, um, but it was a major loss, and it's a stunning architectural building. It was a catalyst for the work that um, Hollywood Heritage does, preserving historic buildings, championing the preservation of you know historic, culturally or architecturally significant buildings um, in Hollywood, in the immediate Hollywood area, including on Hollywood Boulevard. But it's you know it's nice that we do have a piece of it. Yeah, yeah. So this yeah. was hanging probably on the front or something. This would have been one of the. One of these these girls right here. Oh. So yeah. Wow. Sorry, I picked this up. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. Garden Court Apartments. Look at that.
It's so haunting to me to see this stuff. I mean, of course, because it, it looks like a tomb or something. Because yeah, the way it looks where it's cut in half here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it probably broke even. Mm -hmm. But it looks like it's hollow, so it gives that appearance. Yeah. But it is neat. Yeah. Reminds me of one of those movies with Harry Housen was involved with, with, uh, yeah. with the ship. <laughs> yeah. Those things come to life. Yeah, like the Jason and the Argonauts. Jason and the Argonauts, exactly. Yeah. It does have that, doesn't it? It was pretty neat. What does this thing do right here, this big metal? I, everyone asks, I believe it's a lighting um, board, so you would connect your lights on set to oh, maybe this that. central, or in a, in a sound stage to the central um, hookup. Because it has a switch on it. Yeah, it's either that or it's for theater. So it could have, I'm not sure if it came from the Pantages or somewhere like that. Um, that is pretty interesting looking. Mm -hmm. Pantages, that's another beautiful from the outside, or I haven't gone into it. It's gorgeous. I know when I hear the piano, I know it's that Squaw movie, right? The Squaw Man? Oh, yeah, the Squaw Man. The first movie, mm -hmm. solid movie. It was made here. And yes, uh, it was made in a few places, but certainly all the interiors were shot on sets at this, at this building. see some memorabilia from big actors. Obviously Marlon Brando here and Andy Griffith there. I mean there's things in here that may have had no ties to this barn. So perhaps to DeMille, or Lasky DeMille organization. Paramount Pictures for that matter. Spirits, I just want to let you know I am hanging out here for the next few hours. So, while I'm here, I have recording devices. If you would like to make any sounds, show yourself. Step in front of this lens, you'll be on a camera. Something you probably enjoy doing as a career. in some areas around here where the lighting is good. I was just taking pictures right over here and while I was taking them, doing these knocking sounds right up here, right while I was here. That clicking here now is just me from this uh, holster I'm wearing, but right up here, can you click again? Can you make a noise? Are you doing that because I was taking photos right here? Taking pictures of the photos? Yeah, that was loud right here. knocking sounds going on around me. The building could be settling, of course. Can somebody play that piano for me? The noise is back over here now. I love this barn. A lot of history here. I mean, it's sat in Paramount Studios for a long time. is a playable piano. I'm sure these doors were used a lot at one time. I've seen pictures of this. Put these doors up outside. Valentino. I spent some time at his gravesite trying to communicate with him and uh, I believe it was Dietra Flame, the woman 
was the daughter of the woman who he was friends with. And he came to see her in the hospital and telling her she would recover and outlive him. Now, if you look here, it looks like we have her right here. There she is, Deidre Flame. As she's putting roses on his grave. Deidre, I hope uh, you showed up for me to try to communicate with me when I was at the gravesite as well. Research library, warehouse, and studio gym. When he sets up his headquarters in Paramount Studios, the sentimental DeMille makes sure the barn is moved onto the lot with him. An overcrowded Paramount donated the barn to the public in the late 1970s, moving it to a temporary site on Vine Street, just two blocks from its original location. There, the barn fell into a terrible state of disrepair. A vital organization called Hollywood Heritage came to the rescue. On February 15, 1983, they accompanied it on its final journey through the streets of Hollywood to its present location across from another landmark, the Hollywood Bowl. Hopefully, the DeMille barn has ceased its wanderings for good. Now open to the public, this historic building still serves the community where it all began, in a quiet little place called Hollywood. That's her typewriter? That's her typewriter. Okay. Um, they originally, uh, when they moved, when they, when they arrived here in Los Angeles, they hired her. Um, and then, um, as a cost-cutting measure, we're going to fire her. Um, but since the, um, since the typewriter was hers, and it was going to cost about the same amount to just hire a typewriter on its own, they kept her. Um, oh. And she ended up working with DeMille until he died, basically. So I, I, I have no doubt that she probably has, you know, still feels some ties to this place. So I, I, I have no doubt that she probably has, you know, still feels some ties to this place. So I, I, I have no doubt that she probably has. So I, I, I have no doubt that she probably has. 
There's like shoes and stuff. Are those his? There's shoes on the left, shoes, and then uh, leg guards. Um, I saw that. See them in the picture. And then the hat was also his. There's a residuals check that's also framed on the side. Yeah, those, I believe, are them. Um, that's probably okay. That's pr probably a photo from the late teens. Yeah, okay. yeah, nineteen fourteen. So. All right, so it was that. It wasn't boots. Mm -hmm. It's a leg guard. No, I they're see they're uh, they're basically to protect you from pr protect your legs from brambles and stuff. And he's wearing jodhpurs there. So our our idea of sort of the stereotypical old fashioned film director with a you know with you know, writing boots and stuff, or, or like writing pants and everything, that, that really kind of originates from him. And it was okay. really, it was meant to just be um, a more effective way of dressing in, you know, a rural, uh, kind of windswept, dusty uh, area that wasn't very habited. That was her typewriter in that corner, right? Mm -hmm. That's her typewriter. Is that him. his wife, the Constance? Constance, yeah, she was his wife. She was an she was an actress who became his wife. Although he uh, had okay. he had a string of mistresses for a while, oh, um, okay. including one who's in most of his films. Um, she's in a bunch of his silent films, and then she had small parts all the way up through um, the la his last film. Even though they weren't together anymore. Even though they weren't together anymore. Yeah, that was another thing. He would, he could, he could, and would keep a lot of people like on payroll and find jobs for them, even if you know they weren't specifically working on his films. So Chaplin did that too. People like you know his leading lady Ed in Provence. He kept her on payroll long after she you know quit films. And when I went to his gravesite, I noticed there was. Hmm. A bunch of uh, other people that were buried there. I'm mm -hmm. assuming his family. Him and his wife, I guess, are on the top. Mm -hmm. Two big coffins, hmm. the marble. And then in the back, it was just one by itself, said mm -hmm. Josephine. But in the front, there were several. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they had a large family, and a lot of them were, were worked in the industry and worked on his films in some capacity. And his brother was the film director in his own right. Really interesting oh, sure. director, William DeMille. Um, who uh, who made some really interesting films? He's buried um, there too. I saw him. He's buried his there. Um, I don't know if Agnes or Cecilia are there. But Cecilia, I saw that. Yeah, that was Stimmel's daughter. She's an extra in stuff every now and then. <laughs> you see her crop up in some of his films, like The Godless Girl. I had that. Agnes I had that same lamp, by the way. I just want to oh, say. Oh really? Oh, that's It's funny. exactly yeah. what I have in my room. Yeah, you know, I got I it. I know it's a repro. Sweeping. I'm in the area where the piano is. I'm going to have to sit here. Uh, Rudolph Valentino's uh, dedication area. And part of the back door. So let me do some sweeps, see if I, I pick up anything EMF wise. So what are objects that could be haunted? Hold on to some kind of residual energy. to revisit an object, then that's when this thing would light up. But the object itself is not really showing any kind of EMF. I'm getting EMF just now, right here. I just got a serious hit. 
close to the chair from the cheat. It was down here. Let's see if I get it again. It just came and went. It could be from cellular contamination. It's gone now. Let's see if it over here. Just for one moment there. Pulsation enough there for a second. We are behind uh, this glass chamber, so possibly I got a little closer to some of these objects from movies. I pick up a little more. I've gotten a couple of hits though, right below here, down in here by the chair, and lots of these drops for a second. Camera gear and even these old silent movie players they no longer work. Have to be prepared. Let's see. Camera graph projector. 1916. Made by Powers Company. For cobwebby, just now. On my arms here. Oh, I just got goosebumps. Something's here because I feel it. Okay, goosebumps on my arms. And Places it's kind of rattling at the same time. Um, it's interesting, I'm looking at the dawn of sound while this is happening audibly. And also physically. I feel like I walked into somebody here. Somebody here with me? If you could make this, get by this device here, it's a green light, it will actually light up further. The lights will change. Do that. Don't be afraid to come by me. Seemed like I walked into it. I had that cobweb feeling. That's what exactly it was. Like I walked into cobwebs. I'm here to get it. Feel them in my hand here. Unless there's actual cobwebs here. No. Interesting instrument right here. Not sure exactly what it does. But it does have actual switches here. Like this.
say the name of the structure, what kind of structure this is, this building. Oh, a soft voice. Two large cameras. Seems like they got two projection cameras ready to film me. For two decades there, up through sometime in the 50s, this barn was converted into a specific thing. Can you say what it was? Say his name. Can you say your name? Can you say your name? Hello or something. Could that be the voice of Valentino that spoke with an accent next? set up uh, some flashlights to do some of that kind of communication. Perhaps I'll do it where some of the props from the Ten Commandments are residing right now. These are objects from the Ten Commandments right here. Chariot wheel. I set up two flashlights. If anything or anyone would like to turn them on or try to manipulate them, they get triggered very easily. Get your energy by here, you can set them off. Sweeps. Here's the audio playback of voices captured with the audio recorder. It's quite subtle, but if you listen close, perhaps with headphones, you can hear it. movies, possibly Ten Commandments. I focus on that as well. I'm going to take the EMF meter and first sweep on the chest. Let's put this on top. I'm going to move my RTEVP over to that chair from that silent movie, The Cheat. I'm going to put that over there. I kind of feel like something's around that area. Quiet there. Those flashlights have not gone off either. Let me come over here for a sec. I just want to show that 
I'm actually at the arcade EVP going on this chair with other props in this display. Uh, uh, Mr. DeVille, you got the Ten Commandments, you got the Crusades, Samson and Delilah, Cleopatra, King of Kings. So you got a few from silent and talky films, and also the court jester. Take my hand back later. Take it right here. You did buy it. I've mentioned this a few times. Hopefully, the spirit are picking up on it. I got a little bleep. Okay, thank you. Can you do that again? I'll stand back, maybe. I'm being too close. Freaks you out. office. Can you get by any of these devices right now? If you're here, we you try. Kiernan tries to help me move the theater chairs in the film viewing room, but they are bolted down. Let's see. These are mm, they're pretty bolted down. Are they? Oh, they were bolted. If you turn, I know it opens. This it one's a crap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, I can't be bolted down. Enough, but... I wonder what these chairs are from. It's like some movie yeah, theater. Right? I, yeah, right? Yeah, I asked a couple people and they weren't quite sure. Uh, it's a seating company. American seating company. Looks like a part or something. It's got a pattern, I think. Yeah. Static cameras and audio recorders set up in the Cecil B. DeMille office in hopes of capturing something supernatural. Filming it into the DeMille office. By the typewriter, there's a flashlight. Go ahead and try to get that thing to light up. There's one on his desk. By the one book near his hat and glasses or glass case, there's an EMF meter, that thing that lights up different colors. That's by the Squaw Man. Um, same with that. Go by that and that thing will light up into different colors. The other ones will just turn on. And of course, if you want to speak, I got the audio recorder by the typewriter. Try to communicate. That way we know you're hanging out here. We'd like to know who you are. If you could say your name, mention somebody that works here, their name. We'd all like to hear that. Thank you. Or of course, show yourself in any way or move something. That's okay too. Next is what looks like a shadow hand. This could have been made by me, but there is no sound of anyone around when it happens. That is why I am presenting it. I will repeat the clip and slow it down after.
recording. Alright, Cecil B. DeMille's office and his desk and the typewriter's back there. This is a visual capture that could be a flying bug, but it moves in and out by the edge of the left side view very quickly, so I'll leave it for you to decide. First is a visual capture of shadow movement. If it had been done by me, I would have heard something, but I did not, so I'm presenting it here. That voice capture was unique and that you hear a woman and a man's voice speak in unison. Since there was no one around and I do not hear those voices again, I am presenting it here. Next is shadow movement that appears could be from within the film viewing room though I'm not 100% sure. You can hear a high-pitched voice at the same time, but it's hard to make out what was said. This was not made by a vehicle passing by. I would think if I had been in the other room, I would have heard something or seen something more. This is how the outside vehicles would reflect on the door. Okay, I'm recording again. Another one of my Tachi uh, cameras. And I want to put it also in Cecil B. DeMille's office. Okay, I'm going to start recording my audio in Cecil B. DeMille's office. An EVP, at least one, has been captured in here at one time. And I think it was his secretary.
there were no visual captures, only audio from the Olympus audio recorder next to the secretary's typewriter. Women's bathroom, or actresses as they're known. The men bathroom. Yes. Actors. By the time you see this episode, lots of it, many portions of it were probably filmed years ago. Five cents, please. Hey, doggy. You will hear audio from the video, but I was alone in the room. Any spirits around can speak with me? Show yourself, make some sound. Would like to see you. Getting some damage right here. It seems like the podium. Who did that? Do that again? I heard it. I'm getting a little knockings right here. Keep doing that. Do some more. I don't see any wind or anything coming in here. No. You gonna move? Yes, the video on Valentino is playing in the background, but the sounds and voice were not from the video or done by me. There was no one in the room with me. The GoPro camera did not pick up all the sounds that were heard. Here. stuff going on in here. Presence is strong. So they do not know the actress who wore this dress. She has not yet been identified. Already. Oh, I'm hanging by a Charlie Chaplin exhibit.
down there, if you can look closely, you can see the picture where he's wearing this suit. That is old. Yep, banging again. The Tramp Costume. Gloria Swanson imitated Charlie Chaplin's Tramp character in two films, Sunset Boulevard and in the film which she wore this Tramp costume. Can you name the second film where Swanson appeared in the costume as Chaplin? Well, I just remember her being on um, Carol Burnett's show, very early 70s, and she wore that costume and the little skit in her older age. Back to Mary Pickford's uh, makeup area. Grumman's Egyptian Theater, it's still there. They were going to tear that down. Same with El Capitan. Still there, they wanted to tear that down. And they have that chocolate place inside there that I've eaten at. Catherine Hefburn, Louise May Alcott, this little woman. Douglas Fairbanks. Pantages. We hear a movement in here still. the vibe from here. Do a little psychometry.
was speaking with a museum staff member, I don't remember his name, about haunted activity in the barn. I kind of felt some cold spots. Okay. Which seemed real. You know, but I've never had any personal experience. I'm kind of glad I think I'd be, st I'd be too, too scared. scared. <laughs> but they told me about some of the people that, that work, maybe still do. They even did seances here and stuff upstairs, all these different stories. I've heard of that. There's, uh, I don't remember her name, but there's someone, secretary, like the typewriter, I think was what the story was. So you heard about that one too. They told me about that. Okay. <laughs> see you. We'll see you. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Hollywood Bowl. Some great concerts have happened over there. Alright, here I am back at the uh, Hollywood Museum. And I see a new addition from the other times I've been here. Buster Keaton, that's who it is. Yes. That's who this is, Buster Keaton, I know it. No doubt. Great stuff you do. Very entertaining for its time. If you haven't watched Buster Keaton movies, you need to go back and watch them. Right, Buster? Right, Buster Douglas? I'm going to shake your hand. I might have said this the last time I was here, but I'm trying to figure out why Chubsy here has his hand on his groin area. It's kind of strange, right? Laurel. And Hardy. Hardy har har. He used to eat pretty hardy and likes to hold his wiener. If you haven't seen the movie March of the Wooden Soldiers, it's a classic. You gotta check it out. I used to watch it as a kid as a tradition during Christmas time. I hear this homeless woman outside. When I pulled up here to come into the museum this time, she was outside there, squatting down, no pants on, just pulled up shirt, taking a crap. I walked right up on her. <gasps> Startled her, she looked at me, she looked disheveled, dirty face, kind of, looked crazy. Anyway, I told the guy who was staying here, working here. She's talking herself out there, kind of whimpering, I feel so bad. Douglas. Fairbanks Sr. wore this in the Iron Mask. From We Live Again, 1934. Jack Oakey suit from uh, the Mary Monahans. Right there. Oh, no.
are the small and growing number of pioneers, the first filmmakers. This ambitious, adventurous group of mostly New York show people who find the bustling the street for Manhattan shooting plan. Their search for desirable locations takes them to the rooftops where, high above the city, the wind blows through their makeshift sets. In the Bronx, city pops become battlefields, and melodrama is filmed in the outer reaches of Brooklyn. But the real center of filmmaking is not New York City. Surprisingly, it is across the Hudson in the wide open town of Fort Lee, New Jersey. Here, the picture business is really in motion, cranking out the flickers. Success for any and all who join this new enterprise seems assured as excited audiences begin to crowd into storefront Nickelodeon. Things change for Thomas Edison the inventor of the movie camera, along with nine of the major studio heads, forms a motion picture package company. This cleverly conceived truck is designed to block anyone else from getting a piece of the action. To avoid license fees, royalties, and the strong arm tactics of the trust, independent filmmakers begin a great vibration. They flee to Cuba, Canada, Mexico, but the majority settle up and down the California coast, and most of them come to Los Angeles. A few miles from the center of town is an isolated suburb called Hollywood. Nestled among the citrus groves, this sleepy little farming community is in for a rude awakening. 